All right, uh, we're going to talk about manufacturing today and uh, operations, supply chain management. What's operations? What does it mean, operations, when you hear that in a company? What, what is operations? Yes, Shana. The way the company works or the way they do a certain the way they do things, the way they make things, operations, and uh, it's it's is very um, um, uh, relevant to uh, manufacturing, right? Make how do you make things, right? How do you make cars? How do you make clothes? How do you make shoes? How do you make glasses, right? Things have to be made, so that's operations, right? Uh, and a big part of operations is supply chain management. Does anybody know what supply chain management is? What is a supply chain? It's like the it's like the product, like how it moves, basically. Or I, I have an idea of what it is, but I can't explain it. Yes, so it's how things move from raw material. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, no, that's operation. It's it's how where you get the the um, where a manufacturer gets their supplies from, their parts and things like that, and how it moves. You know how something is initially raw materials and how it moves to a finished product. It's a chain of links in there. And at every step, something else happens, right? That's the supply, and it's, that's called um, uh, supply chain. And supply chain management is um, how do you manage the supply chain and make it efficient uh, and, and um, um, uh, be as productive as possible, minimize waste, um, have things in a timely fashion, have uh, have uh, your supplies when you need it, them when you need them at the quantity you need them and so forth. There's a huge, uh, it's a huge uh, um, job market actually. Supply chain management, right? We do have a supply chain management class here at CSM, right? Um, uh, uh, definitely lots of jobs out there in supply chain management. Um, so let's talk about production management or management or operation. It refers to the to the planning, implementation, and control measures of uh, production, right? You have to plan how are you going to produce something, then you have to implement your plan, and control measures are really important because you want to make sure it's working. And if there's uh, anywhere anywhere in the uh, production where it's not working or where there's waste or where there are errors and things like that, you want to eliminate those. So control measures have to be constantly in place. Uh, you don't wait until the uh, product is finished to check it, to make sure it's working. You want to catch it during production if something is done uh, wrong, right? Um, it's used to convert resources into finished products, right? Um, key decision companies have to make is, do they make a product or do they buy a product, right? So let's say you want to start a company and you want to sell clothes. You have a really cool fashion idea. Right, and you want to start making your, your you created the design and everything, and now you want to start selling this kind of uh, design, right? Have great name, uh, or you know, catchy name and things like that. What does it mean you have to decide if you make or buy? What are the options you have? Imagine you're doing this right now. You're an entrepreneur. You came up with this really popular design and you want to start selling it. What does it mean, make or buy? It's very simple. Yes. Is there a, like, do you make it yourself? Do you buy it from a different distributor? Yes, exactly. Do you make the clothes? yourself or do you buy them from somebody else or have somebody else make them to buy and buy from that way right yeah um are you going to be a reseller or are you going to be a producer right and sometimes you even have to make make the make or buy decision even if you make the products yourself um uh you know let's say you're making um um let's see um some kind of household product Right, you're you're making sh you're selling shampoo bottles, right? And uh, you know what kind of things do you need for shampoo? You need the bottle, you need the top, you need the packaging, and 
you need the ingredients and things like that, right? Um, uh, at some point, you might realize, hey, I have all this great manufacturing facility for this. I don't need to, uh, I could easily make, um, do the, uh, make, make the bottles, let's say, not quite realistic, but you know, I could make the bottles instead of buying the bottles, right? I have all the setup and everything. All I need is some kind of plastic melting thing and molding and, and then I make my own bottles and integrate that in my current manufacturing system, right? So it's not just only, it's, it's a decision you make sometimes also, you might decide you're going to make things that you bought previously, you can easily integrate them in your own manufacturing system, right? Uh, the production process, so there are different types of production, mass production, mass customization, and lean production, and I actually have slides on these, so I'm going to explain them in a little, little more detail. Mass production relies on machines and automated assembly lines to produce goods that are identical and adhere to certain standards of quality. Partially completed products are moved from one work, worker to the next on a conveyor belt. This is a traditional factory assembly line work. All the output is the same. They essentially are exactly the same products, right? Um, um, you know, you, the worker sits here, does something, and then the product gets moved to the next station. Another worker does something else to it and so forth until you have a finished product. And they're all the same. So what, what kind of product can you think about that might be mass production, that might be mass produced? in a setting like that. Give me an example of mass production. Ty. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Yeah, they have, you know, liquid, the bottles that get filled in the top, yeah. Yeah, uh, they have a few variations, maybe cans versus bottle, but that's, that's pretty much it, right? Good example, yeah. Um, the next one is mass customization, production tailored to customers' individual needs, like clothing. So a lot of things are the same, but there are some things that get customized, like the size of things, maybe the color of things, different styles and stuff like that. So, so you are utilizing part of your production system is, is the same, but then at one point, it, it, uh, things are done differently because of, of customization, right? Uh, um, they use usually... a Flex within that you have something called flexible manufacturing system, um, something made to order. Uh, for example, cars, right? Cars use mass production as well, even though there's a lot of other stuff going on there, right? You have different models and all that. So it, it's more, a little more mass customization when you do cars, but part of the production system is very standard. You know, you have the body, you have the, the certain things that are the same, but then you have a customer who orders a certain color with certain add-ons. That's mass customization, right? It's made to order. Right. What other products can you think about that are made to order, similar to that? That are part of it is comes from the general production, but then certain things, there are certain variations that the customer can choose from and they can order that way. Yes. Um, Ellie, right? I know, like Converse and stuff. If you go on some other like website, you can customize the shoes to like have a different fabric design, but it's still the same like shape of shoe. But color, you can choose your color and things like that. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that with Converse. Yeah, but that's a good example. Converse shoes, you could, shoes you can go on a website and 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 do some minimal customization such as color and fabric, and then pick your size and things like that. And then they have to make it based on that, right? Yeah, uh, computers. Not Apple computers, because they are all the same. You have so many different options, but you can go to, for example, Dell computers. You can go on their website and customize your computer. Uh, yes, Kevin. Apple does. Oh, you can like go and customize it. You can say, I want... So if I want a different processor, but they have only certain options, don't they? Only have certain options. No, not well in in certain hardware you are restricted, but they have like a plethora of options, right? But you can't go on the website and and do make one. You can to order. 
you can that they don't uh, that doesn't exist and you can order it from the apple website the computer that doesn't exist in their catalog it doesn't exist yes yes you can order that then but those are more about commercial commercial i'm talking about customer consumer you products because do that. um uh, you can for example decide to upgrade your m2 if you wanted and maybe i don't know uh bigger storage or whatever mm -hmm. you, you can do that yeah okay uh yeah i wasn't aware of that i thought apple i just has a certain models and you have to pick your model they simply don't advertise it. They don't advertise it. It's okay. really expensive. Yeah. So most consumers probably won't do that. But okay. Yes. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, you know, and the uh, mass customization is also applied in the service industry, right? Fast food industry. Um, there's a certain thing, you know, the burger. But what do you want on it? Do you want everything on it? Do you want cheese on it? Do you want lettuce, tomatoes? Do you want to leave out the onions and things like that? That's all mass customization. Certain things are done in masses, but then parts of it can be customized. The third one is lean production system. It's a set of principles concerned with reducing waste and improving the flow through uh, eliminating certain things. Wasteful overproduction, right? One of the, the problems is, um, that companies often face is they produce more than they can sell. That's a waste. That's overproduction. What, what choices do companies have when they make more products that, that, they, that they can sell? What do they often do? Consumer products with consumer products. What do they often do? Sales. Sales. They, they put them, they, they reduce the price. They do promotions. They want to get rid of them, right? Uh, very often with consumer products, that's what, what you see. Now their profit margin is decreasing, but better than throwing it away, right? Sometimes they do throw it away. Right? They don't want to sell that. Sometimes they just don't sell it, right? But most of the time, they will reduce the price, which is kind of waste, wasteful. Right. Um, you should really try to make a company should try to make as many as they can sell. Right. Uh, unnecessary wait time. What what kind of wait times are we talking about? What is an unnecessary wait time in production? What could cause production to stall where you have to wait for something? Yes, Kevin. Supply chain disruption. Yes, supply chain disruption, or maybe just not even disruption, but not well planned. But we saw that a couple of years ago, was it two years ago? The Suez Canal problem we had, where, where there was a huge supply chain disruption. And uh, some of the parts that, that were um, um, held up were parts that were used in car manufacturing. So uh, cars were, car manufacturers could had to basically stop or slow down building cars because they didn't have the parts, right? But that's something that's out of the control of the company. Even if you do lean production system, you can't control that. But you could have, you could have a different system where you are not just depending on one supply chain supplier, where you have multiple. If that, that chain is disrupted, you have another area you can go to, right? And sometimes it's just because you didn't plan well. Now you have to wait for your parts, right? Um, needless transportation. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like if a clothing manufacturer sources their material from Spain and then manufactures it in Indonesia and then labels it in packages and then like that somewhere else and it ships it to America. Such an unnecessary. That's a lot of yes. Uh, that's a lot of shipping. So you source uh, and 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 Aaron's example, a clothing manufacturer sources the materials from Spain. They get shipped to Indonesia to get manufactured to in uh, in Indonesia. Then they get packaged maybe in India or something, right? And then they get shipped to the United States. It's a lot of shipping costs, a lot of transportation costs, which adds up, right? So maybe and and it's also bad for the environment, by the way. Very bad for the environment. Transportation is one of our biggest culprits why we have this global warming problem, right? Um, so, um, you know, why not come up with a um, manufacturing um, plan where you source locally? That could change your entire business model, right? Now you're going to have different prices, different type of products, the quality could change and things like that, right? But but you know um, there are you know there are other ways that you can reduce um, your transportation cost, right? 
uh, ex excess inventory. Again, that's sim simply it's similar to wasteful overproduction, but maybe you bought too much material, too much material to make summer clothes. And now you're done with summer and those next year, those colors aren't going to be trendy. So you can't really hold them for next year's production, right? And it also costs to hold inventory. Storing inventory is expensive because it takes space. Warehousing is very expensive. Uh, Superfluous fluish, fluid motion. What does that mean? What does the word superfluous mean? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Look it up, somebody. It's to exceed um, what's necessary, so just too much of it. To, to, yeah, exceed what's necessary, right? Yeah. And redundant over uh, redundant over processing, right? Um, so um, you in the lean production system, you have, you try to avoid all of those. And that makes you more efficient and um, will increase your bottom line, your profit margins, right? Operations management, next topic is, uh, you know, and, uh, is capacity planning. We, you have to plan what, what capacity you need, right? Determine how much of a product an organization can produce to meet demand based on maximum possible production. So what's the highest, most you can produce? Consumer demand is very important. How much of a product do consumers want to buy from you? You don't want to overproduce and end up with products you can't sell or you, you have to sell at a lower price, right? Um, introduction of new technology or equipment. Anything that you can um, introduce in your operations uh, management that uh, will reduce um, waste or, or make things more efficient or automate things that were previously done manually, right? Uh, opportunities for warehousing. Again, warehousing, where do you store your things, right? Uh, and then you have to decide where your facility is going to be located. Uh, so there are things you have to consider. Do you want to be close to the market where your cu customers are? your facility, basically your, your factory, right? Should it be close to the market? Should it be close to where you buy your materials? Or should it be close to utilities? Like, I don't know, you know, water, energy, and things like that. Um, proximity to hazardous waste disposal, if you are working with hazardous wastes, right? The, 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 these things will also have an impact on your transportation cost. So um, often the question is, do we want to be close to the market or do we want to be close to the um, uh, materials? Maybe one of the things you can think of, how much does it cost me to uh, ship materials versus how much does it cost me to ship finished products? It's not always that the finished products cost more, right? But you also have to look at where your market is located. A lot of times your market is not only in one specific area. Especially if you're a global company, it's going to be uh, in multiple parts of the world, right? But again, these are the, the location decisions you have to make. Labor and location decisions, right? You have to think about where, where you know, when you start planning for um, a factory, uh, and you have, before you decide where you have to locate it, you have to make sure that the location also has the availability of workers that can do this type of work. Otherwise, you're just going to go to the cheapest place in the world with the lowest rents and lowest utility costs and low, best tax rate laws for, in your, that are in your favor, right? But you can't do that because you have, you're dependent on labor, right? You want skilled labor, right? You, want, you, you got to make sure the location provides you the skills that are necessary uh affordable labor that's why um companies do offshore right uh the living conditions because you're going to have your um you might move your um um labor force to another location or you know in general you uh, you know your management at least is going to live in that location and your management might come from your 
uh, home base, right? So it's going to be more attractive if you have better living conditions, right? Uh, tax incentives. Some places provide tax incentives, right? Um, laws and regulations that you have to follow, especially when you locate or uh, move internationally. So those are all the things you have to consider. Um, you know, minimum wage laws. Why do we not have a lot of manufacturing in the Bay Area? Why is it more service-based and knowledge-based work here? Because manufacturing would be very expensive here. All right. Um, if you're starting a... Um, tech company that needs a lot of um, software engineers and hardware engineers and things like that, uh, you might still move to Silicon Valley even though you don't get tax incentives and even though you, you, you do have to pay high wages, right, because of the availability of labor. There are other hubs in the United States, but I think Austin is one of them. Where else is a tech hub? Dallas? In New, York. New York, I always see New York more of a finance and but for tech, for tech, maybe. Yeah. Oh, Seattle, yeah, definitely Seattle, yeah, yeah. So, and there are little smaller hubs here and there, you know, but but you know, you are dependent on on um, 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 hiring, uh, being able to hire the people that you need, right? So, for that, the location is important, right? And then you, next, you do your facility layout. There are different types of layout, process, product, cellular, and fixed position layout. And I'll discuss these. Oh, actually, let me just see here. No, I, I, I'll discuss, I guess I'll discuss them from here. So process layout is in a factory um, uh, when you um, create stations um, that are specifically performing a specific process. Let's say you're making teddy bears. One station would be cutting the materials. That's the process of cutting. The next station could be um, sewing. The next station could be stuffing. And the next station could be gluing on the eyes. And the next station is putting on the ears. The next station is um, dressing the teddy bear and, and, and finally packaging, right? That's process layout, right? Uh, another layout is product layout. Maybe you are making multiple products, not just one type of product. So a company could make teddy bears and, and let's say a toy company, teddy bears, dolls. Uh, what else does a toy company make? Like toys, not board games. What other toys? Tricycles, you know. So now you have a station that makes the teddy bears and all the teddy bears produced at that station. Another station makes the dolls. Another station makes the tricycles. Another station makes the building blocks or whatever you might have, right? Um, uh, and um, so that's product layout. Um, cellular layout is when you have a, it's kind of a mix between process and product. You have a certain product and people kind of sit together and they all work on that product, right? Um, they might have different um, tasks, but they kind of, I mean, think of people sitting in the circle and all working on, on one product, right? Uh, I don't remember what fixed position layout was. Um, mm, mm, mm. Fixed position layout. Uh, does anybody remember from the textbook fixed position layout? Look it up real quick. Oh, yes, go ahead. Isn't it like uh, I, I looked it up and it's like, it says that the project remains in one place and the workers and equipment come to that one work area. Yes, thank you, thank you. That's exactly what it is. So the product, it gets produced, you know, now the product doesn't move, but employees move, right? So somebody does something where the product is being produced and then the next person comes, you know? Think about a car that's being assembled. I'll show you a video later about Tesla, how they make cars, right? Um, but, uh, you know, the car doesn't necessarily get moved, but, but different people come and do different things. They attach the doors, they attach the door handles, they attach the glass and this and that, right? So um, that would be, thank you, thank you, that's um, for um, reading that to us. Uh, 
in this carbon. Uh, technology in the production process. There are a lot of uh, there's a lot of technology in use in production. A lot of automation. A lot of things aren't done manually anymore, right? Uh, why? Or we know why. You know, it's more efficient, saves money. What? What is it? Good or bad? That things are being done by robots. In your opinion, is it good or bad that we use robots to make cars? Yes. It could be good and bad. It could be good because it could be get things done more efficiently, but it could also be bad because then we have a higher unemployment. Cause what? Because it could cause unemployment. Yes. So uh, the good part is that we have now more consistent production, less errors, more consistent. Um, uh, better quality and, and things like that, right? But of course, short term negative effect is anytime you implement a, 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 some automation, some people may be laid off, right? And it could cause um, um, lay, um, unemployment in the community, right? Um, but anyway, so any device that performs automatically completes repetitive tasks. Uh, has anybody ever worked in? Uh, at a job where they had to do a repetitive task. Does anybody work? Yeah, do you want to mention what you did? Um, I just like, keep making the same thing. You keep making the same thing. What kind of industry? It's oh, yeah. Okay, so you can't continue doing <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. You fill up ice, go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that that can be quite repetitive if you keep doing that all day long, right? Um, anybody even more more repetitive where you just do one movement all day long? Probably not. But when I was your age, when I was in college, and one summer I worked at a at a coffee packaging factory, and the station I started in, I had to put the expiration date on the box. And the coffee boxes would come and put the expiration date. The next person, oh, the person before me closed, put the tape over the box and closed. I had to put, I mean, all day long, I had to just put the stamp on it, right? Horrible, horrible, you know. I mean, I only did it in the summer. But they did a little bit of job rotation where you don't didn't do the same thing forever, right? Uh, but still, that's repetitive. Those kind of tasks nowadays are automated. You don't need a person sitting there putting the stamp. On, uh, uh, with expiration date on the box, right? It performs with high accuracy, less mistakes are made, right? Uh, worker, it works in hazardous conditions. Certain jobs are dangerous for people to, or certain conditions are dangerous for human beings. Um, working with specific chemicals, fumes, and things like that. But you can send robots to do the work, right? Uh, they definitely can reduce cost and raise productivity. It's very heavily used in the automotive industry and household appliance industry. Uh, other technologies used, uh, CAD, CAM, and CAM, I guess. Computer-aided design is um, um, basically software that helps you design, uh, design things and, and, and produce them according to that design. Computer-aided manufacturing helps with the man management of the manufacturing. Um, you know, how things are done, how, um, when things need to be ordered and, and, and when supplies are running low, it's going to be automatically sending out a message to the suppliers who will then send new supplies and, 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 and you know, dealing with all the uh, scheduling could be part of that. You know, scheduling can be quite a, a task in a big factory. Right, um, so all that is done with uh, um, software and computer integrated manufacturing uses really both of these systems, right? Um, it's a very sophisticated system. Purchasing and inventory control. Purchasing is the task of acquiring the materials and services needed in the production. So what kind of materials and supplies do we need? Again, it's a big part of supply chain management purchasing, right? How many do we need? At what cost? Can I trust this vendor? What if this vendor doesn't deliver? Who's my backup vendor? Or have multiple vendors, right? Based on your location or multiple locations. Uh, inventory control is the receiving, storing, handling, and tracking of everything a company's stock. Uh, in a company stock from raw materials to finished products. So if I'm making teddy bears, how many 
yards of of from uh, of of um, uh, fabric do I have? How many googly eyes do I have? Right. Uh, how many of them are half finished? How many finished teddy bears do I have? You have to know at any point in time how how much inventory you have. Of raw, from raw materials to finished product, right? That's inventory control. And you want to minimize waste and you want to uh, minimize storage too because storage or warehousing costs money, right? So the, system, you, the way you do that, you have something called just-in-time inventory control, right? So you manage your inventory system where you order things just in time for when you need them, not too early and definitely not too late, right? So you don't have to store things. So things keep flowing. It's not like they sit there for a month and then you start using them. They come in and they go right into production. Production goes right into the uh, uh, distribution to the retail stores and things like that, right? Uh, keeps on hand the smallest amount of inventory possible, right? Items are ordered just in time for use, reduces storage costs, requires strong suppliers. You have to be able to trust your suppliers. And, and rely on them. If your suppliers fail you, you, you can be in trouble with this because you don't have um, a lot of materials at hand back, to back you up, right? Um, so uh, requires a robust inventory control system. You really have to know what you need and how much you need and when you need, right? All right, quality control is um, um, the technique, activities, and processes used to guarantee that a good or service meets a specific level of quality. How can you do that? Let's say you make teddy bears. How do you ensure they, are, they have, meet your quality standards? Yes, Ty? Uh, leadership. Through leadership, and what does le what can leadership do? What are some of the steps they can take? Oversee the operations. Oversee the operations, yes. Uh, kind of every step, what else? What would you do? You're selling teddy bears, you're making teddy bears and selling that. Before you get, the consumer gets it, you wanna make sure they have quality. There's testing in place, right? A lot of products get tested before they go out, right? So you could go at the end when the teddy bear is done, you pull the eyes, make sure they're not, they don't come off. You kind of stretch it a little bit, make sure the stitching is done properly and things like that. And then let's say out of 10 teddy bears, three of them are not up to standards. That's 30% that now you can't sell. To avoid that, what you can do is total quality management. Um, you kind of oversee every step of the way with the help of leadership, but also give employees the, the, the authority or, or the, not authority, the means to check and make sure things don't get to the next step unless it's done properly, right? And constantly look for improvement, right? Um, so you don't want to wait until the product is finished. You want to catch any errors while they're being made. Oh, there's statistical quality control continue well, monitoring of each state through the entire production process, right? What I just uh, mentioned. There's a um, um, uh, process called Six Sigma. We're not going to go into it, but it's uh, you can get certified in Six Sigma and things like that. Analyzes manufacturing processes, eliminates, eliminates defects by re removing process variations, right? Um, the goal is to have 3.4 defects per million events. So that's very little. Let's say three, three out of a million can be defective. Anything more than that, or if anything more than 3.4 in this case, that means it's not working, All right? Uh, last topic is supply chain management, which I mentioned in the morning. I mean, a little while ago. I, I got to put on my glasses to read this. So, so some of the things you have to consider is ethical sourcing, right? Finding and using resources responsibly. What does that mean? Erin. Um, the stuff that you're using to manufacture your products comes from 
responsible sources. Like, there's no child labor involved. And Environmental violations and things like that. Yeah, make sure you buy from from ethical suppliers and and uh, don't uh, use um, forced labor or and and uh, don't um, damage the environment while they are creating their 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 sources. Right? Yeah. Um, production. Comp uh, we talked about production components are manufactured in an environmental respect uh, environment in an environment respectful of the worker and the environment. So treat your workers properly. You know, if you treat your workers properly, they're going to produce better. They're going to be more effective, and they're going to care more about their jobs, right? And uh, and respect the environment, right? Uh, packaging provide product is packaged in a recycle and recycled materials, hopefully, uh, or with minimal materials. I'm still dumbfounded sometimes when I see how large packages are for tiny products. And that styrofoam, so much styrofoam, I get it, it protects products, but does it need to be that big and that thick styrofoam is really bad for the environment. Can't even recycle it. You're not allowed to put styrofoam, at least in the city of San Jose, you can't put styrofoam in a recycle bin, right? Plastics, so much plastic, right? So, um, Again, the goal is, I, I mean, it says here, uh, supply chain management and, and uh, reducing carbon footprint, right? Um, so with the least damage on the environment. Shipping and pro uh, producing, I mean, and distribution product is moved via cleanest technology using the most efficient route. Consumer purchase, consumer informed of resources and methods used in manufacturing. So let the consumer know of the ingredients, of what, how we make this product, uh, what, is there anything that could be uh, hazardous to the consumer that, or, you know, that uh, should the consumer should need to be informed. Um, consumer action products, product easily assembled and or used packaging is recyclable. So if you make any, you know, uh, make it easy for the customer to use the product. You shouldn't just do that um, for this reason, but also they're more likely to buy from you again, right? And, and, um, Again, make things recyclable so the customer or will um, put the packaging in the recycle bin rather than the regular trash, right? Uh, repurpose product or parts to be able to be reused and then the final disposable when, when ultimate use is gone, gone, product remains recyclable. So hopefully your product can be recycled. And we all have a part in this, us consumers, right? We, can, we all can do a little bit more little more effort to recycle, a little more effort to buy less materials that aren't recyclable easily, right? Um, that's it. Okay, let me go ahead and stop the um, recording.